I think you're just mad that nobody wants to see your hairy chest and pay you hundreds of dollars for it. And there's nothing to be ashamed of it, but you don't need to discourage me because you can't do it. Nobody wants to see your man titties, Brad. Everyone wants to see Katie's titties. <laughs> Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators and a space we share our stories on all things queer related. My name is Brie Walker, Brie Logan on all platforms. If you're not listening to this on Apple Podcasts and you're not subscribed, what the fuck are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. And if you're not following us on Spotify, uh, give us a follow. We have a fucking awesome guest today. Uh, she is a poet. She was on TikTok before it was TikTok. And uh, she's a part of the Gay Bitches of Ohio <laughs> gang gang. Um, you can find her at Katie Kai on TikTok. Please welcome Katie Marie. Hello. How are we? <laughs> We're good. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm great. I've never done a podcast before, so this is completely new to me, but I mean, just going with the flow. Awesome, awesome. She, if you, you guys didn't see this, obviously, because I didn't record this, but she hit, she flipped a huge fucking bong before we got on this podcast. Which was, <laughs> wait, what? You just ripped a bong before you got yeah, on this. I did. I did. I, I am a stoner. It is, it's a part of it. I feel like my creative flow just like, you know i get it i get it um do you feel like when you're making tiktoks that like the best ideas come high or do you like to like record them high or both honestly so i i try to only smoke during at like night and that's when i normally get all of my ideas and i really just kind of like film right then and there and then in the morning i'll go ahead and refilm it but when I'm filming, I do kind of like being a little bit high just because I feel like it's easier to get into a kind of like mode, if that makes yeah. sense. So it's just easier totally to loosen up. I totally get that. I don't think I could shoot anything high, but I definitely get creative ideas. Mm -hmm. I love painting while high too. That yeah. is so much fun. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love, I love doing that. I don't really paint that much, but like doing creative things like that is so much fun. I like getting ideas. I get ideas in the shower a lot. I get ideas when I'm walking a lot and like right before bed and when I'm high. Those are like the only four like times where I get like the most creative ideas. The biggest mistake is when I'm sleeping and I have a thought and I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'll remember it in the morning and I don't write it down. And then I know that there was this idea that I needed to it's just, it's so frustrating. And so always, always, always write your thoughts down the second they pop up, regardless exactly. of where you're at. Exactly. Even if you think it's stupid, mm -hmm. like stupid shit is funny, mm -hmm. you know? Most definitely. So <laughs> you have this big ass mic. If you guys aren't seeing this video, um, and you probably won't until I launch my Patreon, but that is to come. She's got a big microphone, like this huge ass weird microphone that she's holding right now. It's, it's because I suck and I literally forgot my headphones. And so this was like, this is second best, but this is like honestly the first because this is like an actual microphone. It looks like a shark's eyeball, like yeah. on a stick. Yeah, but it's like testing, testing. Hi, hi. It's really good quality for ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> you shoot ASMR videos? I uh, no, I don't. I but I like I've been getting into them and it's been putting me to sleep because I have really bad insomnia and I've been trying it out. I hate the mouth sounds; they literally make me want to die. But uh, everything else, like putting your like, I don't, I don't know how to do it. Like, so mm, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I never really got much into ASMR. I've seen some videos and it is really satisfying. But not enough to, like, you know, put me to sleep or anything like that. There's a couple that they go, like, intense tingles, and I've never experienced – well, I hadn't experienced a tingle before. And then one night I was trying to sleep, and I got into, like, a really, like, state of, like, meditation almost. And then I was, like – like, ugh, I don't know how to describe it. I was yeah. just, like, tingling. And I'm, like, oh, that's kind of cool. But um, I've never been able to experience that before. Listen to ASMR and then meditate? Um – I mean, ASMR, I've kind of like programmed my brain that when I listen to ASMR, it is time to go to sleep. But meditating, whenever I do that, it's more so, it depends on when I do it. Like if I do it at nine o'clock, then I'm obviously going to stay up until like 3 a.m. So I'm not going to be going to bed right then and there. But 
I try to meditate and then do ASMR so I can go to sleep because meditating just kind of like puts me in a, like a clear state of mind so I don't have a thousand thoughts when I'm going to bed. So I try to do that, but I mean, it really just depends on my mood and what I'm doing to be completely honest. So what's up with the mic? What did you originally get that for? Because that thing is fucking massive. Um, well, I <laughs> had a past in streaming, and so I, I used it to talk to my clients online and just amplify the video quality. But the thing is, is I bought this, and I never even used it because it was so massive, and it it's massive. So, I mean, it really didn't come in handy, but I, I have a lot of streaming equipment that I was just using. That's cool. Is that for the, the OnlyFans stuff that you do? Yeah. Yeah. I, I started that literally like, you know, it's the 28th now. So I want to say I started that like 16 days ago. It's gained quite a lot of like a pretty decent following right now. I think I'm at the top 3.1% of what? the creators on there. That's yeah. fucking awesome. That's seriously the best. Uh, when you told me you did OnlyFans, I was like, that's the fucking, that is where it's at right now. Like if you guys are trying to make money and. The thing is, is like when I was in a long-term relationship for six years, we were um, trying to come up with money in order to move because we, he was out of the country. His sister actually recommended going onto a streaming site and I did it for a little bit and I just didn't like it because I felt I had to literally do anything and everything and I really didn't have any boundaries with myself and like my prices sucked like I just was really kind of like all right two dollars whatever like it's whatever and then I stopped doing it because I just I didn't feel like it and then started OnlyFans because I'm comfortable posting like bikini pictures and lingerie and like somewhat risque modeling and with my background so it just kind of like I might as well do it already because the quality, the content's already out there. Like I might as well just actually try and make a profit off of it. That's but. awesome. Did you feel like when you were doing like the streaming stuff, it was just kind of out of control? Like, did you feel like you didn't really have much control over? Yeah, it like, was body? really kind of like hit and miss because people, I had to go under a different name and cause I was like insecure. And I didn't really want anybody to um, know who I was. I just, it sucked because it was kind of like there was so many other models on there and when they would come into the chat it was on their terms on what they wanted to see and so it was just kind of like eh. like I could do a little dance and all that but then they would be like okay do this and that and this and that and I just I hated it because I have like really bad knees and they would just like want me to go in these weird ass positions and I'm like I can't do this like I can't and so um, I just I really hated not being able to say no necessarily and on top of it I really hated sitting on my bed for like five hours just waiting for people to come into the room because it sounds really easy but like forcing yourself to actually sit down and sit there for hours and hours and hours is really demanding and like you have to have a lot of self-discipline to actually stream and so I just I hated doing that constantly I could never find the motivation it's easier to do it, uh, do like uh, TikTok lives. Oh yeah, most definitely. now because of it, oh. you're like I've sat on the bed for five fucking hours. I can sit in front and wait for people to get on my live. No, I like I love live streaming on TikTok because people actually interact with me, and I can advertise my OnlyFans onto there, and so it's nice. But. And I, I just, I like that I'm able to be more of like a person, whereas when I was on stream, people just kind of saw me as like a model and I didn't really have a personality, but they see my TikToks and so they kind of have like a personality to like a face. So it's just, I feel like it's better and that's why I'm making a lot more money than what I did now because people actually like know me and understand yeah. my personality. No, I get that. I feel like, and I don't know if you would cons consider yourself like an adult film star or anything like that because you had done the streaming thing, but I feel like it, it's super objectifying because that's kind of the main goal of that is for just physical pleasure, you know, like people are just trying to get their fucking rocks off. But with OnlyFans, it's different because you've built up a fan base, people who actually connect with you, who, who feel like they know you because they've seen your videos. So it kind of goes a little bit deeper into that. 
Yeah, it, it's nice. I, I'm experimenting with it. I don't know. I've always wanted to be able to just have my own income be solely based off of social media because I was waitressing for, I've been waitressing since I was 19 and I'm almost 22. So about like three years. And after a while, it's just so exhausting serving for like nine hours. And especially with like COVID and everything else, like the money just wasn't where it was at and I wasn't paying any of my bills because I couldn't afford anything. And then I think it was honestly my manager, um, he found my TikToks and he was like, so do you have an OnlyFans? And I'm like, I don't think you can ask me that, oh, sir. But like, okay. no. And then I did more research into it and I'm like, eh, sure, why not? I'm not making money. And then within a week, I had already made two grand. And I was like, I'm going to stay right here. And I put in my two weeks. So that's that. But I've I've been making almost almost around 100 to 200. Some nights, if it's really good, like 400 a day at this point. So it's like, I'm just going to kind of stay here and travel and do all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. That's so fucking cool that you were able to make that happen for yourself and, and make it to be your own, something that, you know, you are not doing really out of necessity, but out of the fact that you like it. It's mm-hmm. better than anything that you've done before in the serving industry. I mean, shit, like, I'd love, can I, can I take my clothes off for fucking OnlyFans? Like, <laughs> I, I want to make that kind of money. I, I would help you. I would show you. <laughs> I, would get, I would show you the ropes. Yes. And, like, I know a lot of people, because, like, I mean, my – parents like I've never gone into detail on that stuff with them but at the end of the day like when people are afraid to kind of do that sort of thing to go into like a career after that and be like oh well if you do this then you're not going to have an actual career and I just I don't see it that way I mean we're in 2020 and there's a lot of people that have multiple sources of income and I don't know like nobody's asking you to go buy a titty pic like yeah I mean there's multiple things that I'm about to do like I want to do Twitch I want to start a Patreon for YouTube and all that and so there's like a lot of different avenues and on top of it like I don't really see myself ever having a standard nine to five desk job or needing to go on to an interview because I want to be able to have my own brand be able to have my own merch be my own CEO and my own boss like I I I hate when people try to run me. And so I don't think I could ever go into needing another um, position. If anything, it would be for like TV interviews or something like that. Like that's the only thing I could think of for needing um, approval from somebody higher up because I just, I want to be my own boss at the end of the day. Yeesh, you and I both preach. If I could just run this podcast and, and create content, that would be amazing. And like, you're not missing much from the corporate life. The benefits are nice. Like I would yeah. love to have like my old job, like I could have a retirement fund and all that. But I mean, if you save your money right and you put it away, like, I don't know, I'll figure it out as I go along. Like, but benefits at the end of the day, like, I, I don't fucking know. I never go to the uh, doctor really, knock on wood. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah. I mean, health insurance is nice, but like you can get your own if you're an entrepreneur and the mm-hmm. only thing I'd say is like companies sometimes do a 401k match. So like you're actually like getting money, but mm-hmm. it, it, if you don't have a company that has that, you can have your own 401k. Like you can do it yourself. And if you're making more money than that job, then it doesn't even matter because the match doesn't even matter if you're making more money. Good. And there's risks in everything. Like there's risks being with a company and putting all of your eggs in one basket. Cause mm-hmm. like if you're living paycheck to paycheck, even if you have a good job and you lose it, like you're done. So as an entrepreneur, there's a lot of risk, but I feel like there might be even more risk being in just a job where you can't control anything. I mean, you can control what you do in terms of like your job duties, but you can't control if the company goes under, if they merge, if they let people off, if there's a global pandemic, like you can't, no. Exactly. And honestly, like, not so much sex work, but like being in the adult industry, like there's always going to be a demand. It's not going to be a trend that just dies out. It's not something quick. Like it's inevitable. Like it's something that's always going to be there and it's almost recession proof. Like you're always going to want that. And so it's a nice outlet of always having a demand basically. Sex sells. It always sells. It always has sold. It always will be sold. It will be sold during a pandemic. Sex will be sold during fucking, yeah, like you said, a recession. 
it'll be in the most growing times that we have. It, it literally doesn't matter when you're sad, when you're happy, when you're mad, like any emotion, it really doesn't matter. It's like hospitals, there's hospitals, there's funerals that, you know, funeral homes, and then you have, you know, the adult film industry. Those mm-hmm. three things will Never all ending. be prosperous. <laughs> Never ending. I mean, when people, uh, there's a lot of people that say like, oh, like I can never sell nudes or I can never sell laundry pictures. But I mean, it confuses me because I mean, people are willing to just send them for free to anybody and hope that nothing happens to them. And it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like if you're going to put yourself out there, why not at least be able to pay your bills with it? True. No, I I get. And it's so funny that you bring that up because like, yeah, people will send nudes to the people they're talking to or just the people that they're hooking up with in a relationship with long distance, whatever. And, you know, could look down on like sex work or, or adult film stars and things like that because they're doing it to obtain money and and make a a living off of it. But it makes total sense to me. People just get like, angry that they can make a profit off of it like there's some men that are like oh wow you show your titties so you can pay your bills and I'm like sir I think you're just mad that nobody wants to see your hairy chest and pay you hundreds of dollars for it and there's nothing to be ashamed of it but you don't need to discourage me because you can't do it like I just I mean nobody's stopping you you can try and sell your titties I don't know I just I feel like people judge so quickly on what other people do for a profession when they do the exact same thing they just don't put a label on it Nobody wants to see your man titties, Brad. Everyone wants to see Katie's titties. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's such a double standard with women, right? Like, you have two small titties. You have two big titties. Oh, God, you can't make money from those titties, though. Like, there's, those are just for your partner. Whatever, whatever. Bullshit. But, no, I think it is something that not a lot of people think about as a career path because it is, you know, considered something that's taboo and could affect your professional trajectory depending on the career that you're going in. I mean, like, if you are a student in, like, nursing school and you are trying to have a professional, like, doctor's career or, like, you want to run for politics or something, like, obviously, yes, but I'm not going to be running for governor or anything like that. Like, that doesn't interest me at all. Like, the only thing that I could see myself career-wise is creating something, whether it be painting, taking photos, doing photography. Like, I love photography, my poetry. Like, that's the only way that I would be successful is if I'm creating my work. And so I don't see myself ever like needing to care if something bad were to happen or if my employer were to find out and be like, oh my God, my employer did find out and they were like, oh, what's the username? I mean, so I don't really care. And I know eventually it's going to get out to more people that I do what I do. But at the end of the day, I'm making good money. I'm happy and I'm having a great time doing it and I'm not hurting anybody. I'm paying my taxes. Like there's nothing wrong. I'm I'm happy yeah. and I feel like it just honestly makes people upset that I can have a nice income while doing not the bare minimum, but like, I don't have to spend hours and hours and hours and hours putting in this work and getting a very fair, like a little amount of money back. Well, I feel like it's just asinine this concept that you have to work eight hours a day, a 40 hour work week to have make an honest living. And it's not the case anymore. You have to work smarter first and then harder. I know that like, I can do a job that is, is a 40 hour work week in 20 hours. If you do it efficiently, you know what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like it just does not equate. Like, I don't know how people put, Oh, you got to work this and this and this and and to and and fill your time, all of this stuff and just be busy, busy, busy to make a life. And it's just not, it's not the case. And, and that's, those people are just like, they're sleeping on you. They are obviously not excited about what they're doing. And that's sad. Like I wish that they would be happy because I feel like, I mean, not everybody can be a content creator and do creative aspects. Like there's some people that are really good at being mechanics and like musicians. Well, I mean, musicians can be content creators, but it's not for everybody. And I understand that. And so I feel like that's why they look at me and think that it's not an honest living. But people also look at waitresses and servers and think that's not an honest living because they have to live off tips and they are based your income is based on what another person thinks of you and so I guess I've always been in an industry based off of what people give and I like OnlyFans because I can basically be like it's this much money 
and I don't budge on my prices. There's been a lot of people that have been like, can I lowball this? I'm like, no, you can't. Like, this is my content. I'm putting it out for this price. It's not like a negotiation. There's a lot of people willing to pay the prices of what I had to offer. And it's nice. I can see what my value is and I'm not being judged anymore based off of somebody else, how they view like my performance, if that makes sense. Like if I do a shitty job at serving a table, I'm not going to get stiff. It's nice. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, yeah, it's, it's upfront. You are showing that you have value. You're not going to low ball and give someone a lower price just because they asked for it. Like you are bringing value. You're bringing a product or not a product really. You're bringing a service. Mm -hmm. So like they pay it and if they like it, they'll, they'll subscribe and it'll be a reoccurring thing. And you know, if they don't, then that's something that you have to adjust and see, Hey, what are people liking? What are people not liking? And that's what I do for this podcast too. Like it's just making those little adjustments, but it's all in your control, which is a thing. Exactly. And that's what I love. Like I love being able to create my own stuff. And there's a lot of people also that even with my poetry, they say like, oh, well, you can't do OnlyFans if you're trying to get published as well. And I'm like, I'm almost positive that there are porn stars that actually have books out. I don't think it's a taboo thing just because of your background that you can't publish a book. I mean, if anything, that would give you more of a reason. Like, I have a lot of followers that are wanting to read my book. I don't know. If one publisher doesn't want me, there's hundreds of others publishers, and there's a bunch of different options on getting published. Like, I don't see it as a, oh, God, you do this thing. You're never going to see the light of day. You're not going to be successful in this career. It's almost like they see people who, who do that sort of, who do sex work and that sort of work as less than. And so therefore they can't participate in anything that is not taboo because I don't know what it is. It's just like, oh, you're suddenly not credible mm -hmm. because you, because you do this, this, and this. I don't understand that considering Brad, you are the one that is uh, typing in on Pornhub what you want to see. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't always have to be a Brad. It could be like a Britney too. It could like be like Jessica. a Jessica. I don't know. Show. We won't hate too much on all the straight men. This is Andrew. Straight men. There's also women that are like, nah. I know a lot of girls. It's honestly a lot of girls that are very much so like, oh my God, why do you do that? And those are the girls that are stuck in the same hometown that they graduated high school with, marrying their high school sweetheart on their second baby already. And I'll be specific, but I mean. <laughs> Anybody in specific that you're talking about? Uh. <laughs> um, it's just those are the types of people or, or especially people like from my old high school like there was this one girl who was a grade below her blow me and she was a stripper and she did like all of this shit she was the first one out of my tiny little country high school and everybody lost their shit and was subtweeting her being so nasty like imagine leaving school so you could go shake your tits i'm just staring at her and i'm like do you all see the apartment that she's in right now do you see her outfits that she's wearing did you see that all of her like designer shoes are do you do you see any of this and it just it makes me laugh because it's like she's thriving living her best life and people who don't even know her or talk to her once are going to hate on her and just be a complete asshole to her simply because she is thriving and living a good life and happy and she doesn't have to work hours and hours and hours as a waitress or doing retail any of that and she can just have her own hours be her own boss and people hate that because they think they have to go through like years and years and years of schoolwork and be modest and then find a professional job and they get angry that they can see somebody that has a shortcut and just gets to where they want to be in life and that pisses them off because they're not willing to do what other people do and that's why there's a demand for it because nobody wants to do it or the people that do do it like to cut time. people down that are not conforming to what the masses are doing and if they feel like inadequate and they think that someone is yeah has a shortcut when mm -hmm. in reality it's not a shortcut you know it's, it's not there's a like, lot of work not everyone can be a stripper not everyone can be a sex worker like i would never be able to be a stripper i can't move my body like that it just doesn't work i'm not graceful at all no, i can't I would do it fall on my head it, yeah. it like i like i was talking to her and she was telling me that like she would get bruises all up and down her thigh because you're constantly smacking a pole. And I'm just like, I, I could never have that much strength to pull myself up. Like, they're amazing. 
they're amazing. And for people to say that it's not work, I just would love to see you on a pole trying to make hundreds of dollars in a night. It's hard to make it look beautiful and graceful. And that's why there's professional pole dancers that are on like Mare's Got Talent and they dance. Like it's an art. It's a like, it's a form of art. And even way, way back, like two, three, 400 years ago, most people were wearing less clothing and some, like, there are nude beaches out. Like, I just don't understand what the point is of why people are being so, oh my God, risque. Why can you go to a nude beach with your top off and your dick out and you can't take a picture of it and sell it? It doesn't make any sense to me. Preach. Fucking preach. I agree with all of that. You got to use your assets. You got to use literally your assets. You got to use what you're good at. Some people are good at making spreadsheets and they love it. Some people hate that shit and they're not good at it and they are better at shaking their ass. Wouldn't you rather get paid for something that you're good at? Exactly. Exactly. How has it been figuring out your sexuality through all of that? That was a very long, complicated situation. Um, The first recollection I have was when I think I was 10 years old and I was at my grandma's house and I pulled up the infamous girls kissing girls, girls on girls type of situation. And I thought I had erased the browser history. And um, when I left my grandma's house, not even maybe like a day later, she comes home and she goes, Caitlin, I just... I I need to talk to you. And I'm like, what's up? And she goes, are you gay? And I'm like, "Mm, I don't know what that word means. And she said, Caitlin, you were the last person on this computer and there is gay shit all over it. And I said, "Um, well, yeah, I confess that was me. Cool. Great. And she made me confess to my parents that I had watched it. And I went over to my mom and my dad. I'm like, mom, dad, I watched lesbians online. And my mom goes, Caitlin, it's okay to see a pretty girl and have her walk down the street and be like, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Like I I can admire a beautiful girl, but I don't want to go up and suck on her titties. And I just looked at my mom and I'm like, but like, what if I do want to suck on some titties? And that was like the major turning point for me. And then I just started questioning it. I'm like, huh, weird, weird really weird. And then throughout the years, I think once I got, once I was 14, I met my long-term relationship of six years. But the catch was, was I didn't meet him for three years. So we were online dating for three years. We never sexed. We never did anything of sexual nature on the phone. So it was really just like a really good friendship that I had. Yeah. And then we met, I lost my virginity to him. It was absolutely terrible. No offense if you're watching this. I'm glad <laughs> you're happy. <laughs> um, I, I loved you at one point. I didn't love your dick. It's no, fine. It was awful. It was terrible. But it took three days for me to lose my virginity. Like, it was bad. And um, I never, ever liked having sex with him. It was just not my cup of tea. But, like, the relationship we had, I loved. Like, we were really, really good friends. But it, I really started questioning once we were um, done having sex. The only way I could get off was if I was watching lesbian porn right next to him. Mm-hmm. And so I figured that should have been my cue. And he was kind of taking the hint. And then he let me experiment with girls. It got to a point where I'm like, okay, we've we've been together for six years. My lease was ending and we were sick of long distance. We wanted to move in with each other and we were on a breaking point. He wanted to open the relationship up. I wanted to experiment, but we didn't want to leave each other because it was like the only familiar thing that we had since we were 14. And I was 20 at that point. So it was either me getting married to him and moving to Canada, or I was going to break up with him and live my life. And I chose to break up with him. And I went on this sporadic spree. I hooked up with uh, 10 guys, I think, in a span of a year or so. And it was just like a rebound spiral. I was like chasing, trying to figure out if it was just him that I didn't like having sex. Like I tried one night stand. I tried a friend's benefits. I tried everything, like everything under the moon, just wondering like why I couldn't connect and why I didn't like any of it. And my parents are also, they were very, not homophobe, but no, they're just, they're not accepting. They're very outspoken Christian people. And so they just don't, agree with it if that makes sense and just kind of one day was like I'm 
going to switch my Tinder to girls. And I met a girl on there and we went out on a date. And then when ki- we kissed, I um, it just instantly like phew, clicked right then and there. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm bisexual. Interesting. Cool. Great. And then I went out on a date with the guy and I literally just, <clears throat> I hated it. I hated it so much. <laughs> like I, cause like I have my roles completely reversed, like in sex. I was mainly just kind of treating them like girls. Like I cup one guy's breast at one point. I, nice. I <laughs> Like, I just really went in there. And so it just, the dynamic, it always confused them. They're like, why are you acting like this in bed? And I'm like, mm, I don't know. And why now are you I'm, grabbing my ass? Why are you touching my pecs? Like, like does it make I wish they had boobies. Boobs, boobs, boobies. Boobs, um, boobs, 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 boobs. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, and up until that point, and then I, I basically came out and I'm like, okay, I, I actually am gay. It was actually, I told my manager who was a homosexual he was a flaming homosexual so funny I came out to him I'm like um I'm bisexual and he's like oh okay turns to my roommate and goes so um your roommate is a lesbian and I go what <laughs> he's like, yeah you're not bisexual you're a lesbian and I'm like mm, I uh okay and then I, I kind of just I was like yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. And I ha- eventually came out to my siblings and then it was more so coming out to my parents that was the bigger ticket. I had to, um, me and my parents were actually fighting and we were decorating the Christmas tree that day. And my mom, I came over to decorate. Me and my mom were not on good terms. And she sat me down and was basically just like apologizing for her behavior. And she was like, Caitlin, you can tell me absolutely anything. I want you to know that. And I'm like, I, I know I can. She's like, Caitlin, no, I'm serious. You can tell me that you were a lesbian and I would still love you. And I just looked at my sister and she just nodded her head. And I'm like, well, the universe is not going to hand me a more perfect timing than this. And so True. I basically was like, well, I, uh, I'm gay. And my mom goes, are you joking? And I'm like, no. And she's like, since when? And I'm like, well, mm, uh, uh, since always. And she did not take well to that. She started screaming for my dad to get down here. And then she started crying that I wasn't going to have a professional wedding or like a traditional wedding. I wasn't going to have kids the right way. And she was basically oh, really, really angry at me the whole time we were decorating the Christmas tree. And then I, I now she's at a point where she's accepted it. And she, she met one of the girls that I was seeing and she liked her for a minute. So like it, it's a work in progress, but we're getting there. She still... Like there will be moments where she says, "So you're bisexual, right?" I'm like, "No, mom, I'm a, uh, I am gay." And she says, "Okay, Caitlin," and I think she just thinks it's a phase. But at the end of the day, like I would talk to her and I'm saying, like, "Are do you want to, you know, fuck a girl?" And she'll be like, "No," and I'm like, "Okay, I do." I want to. That's how I know that I'm gay because there's people that are like, I would never, ever, ever go near a girl, and I, I love it. I love it so much. (laughs) I love it. I like it. (laughs) Girls are pretty and they smell nice. So so funny. Well, yeah. I mean, that's such a hard thing to have to deal with in general. Obviously, with all of those preconceptions coming from a Christian family, you know that kind of thing. Like, has it gotten any better since you came out? Have have they kind of come around a little bit? Honestly, my relationship with my parents has been amazing since coming out because I hit a lot of like my political val- my political beliefs with them. Just really everything about my personality, I hid from them because I didn't want them to know about me. It really just I tried being a peacekeeper. I really don't like arguing or fighting. And so I really tried to avoid it at all costs. And I really just wouldn't tell them my opinion on anything. So now that they understand where I'm at with my politics, with my sexual orientation, like all of that, they've kind of not so much like limited what they said, but they're now put in a position where they have a daughter who is a part of the LGBTQ before they didn't have to put themselves in their shoes. So to them, it was, oh, well, you're being damned to hell. And now they have, they're like kind of forced to sit there and be like, okay, are we about to say my daughter's going to hell because she likes girls? And they're like, they're the type of people that they have to be put in a position in order to really understand what somebody else is going through. And so now I feel like they're coming around more. They're not really saying 
a lot of their political values. We're able to have a political debate and not in screaming matches anymore. It's been a lot, a lot better, a lot better, honestly. That's good. Hey, that's good to hear. You know, it does get better. Sometimes it's slower than others, but it seems like they're coming around and you're finally able to be yourself. I feel like that's what kind of maybe is the relief, even though there is some pushback, like you're finally like, these are my beliefs, political, my orientation, and you're more of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really nice. And I feel like they've finally come around to accepting it. And that's all I really wanted to feel accepted with them. That's good. My grandpa, I was hanging out with my grandpa um, a few days ago and I had on this outfit that was like very gay. Like it was, it was like a a white cutoff and I um, had like these striped pants and I had a black belt. So I tucked my shirt in. I had fucking Doc Martens on taking like a selfie to send someone or whatever. And he comes in the kitchen and he goes, wow, I really like that style on you. I really like that. That looks like you. And I was like, <laughs> that's, that's amazing that's slow. it's like stepping into your true self because I feel like if you're hiding behind somebody that you're not I kind of think of it like I used to straighten my hair um every single day and whenever it would get slightly humid or a little bit of rain my hair would curl really really bad and it's like I wasn't living my true authentic self and now it's like I've never straightened my hair I haven't straightened it in like almost a year and a half now it looks better when it's curly. And so it's, it's just like, it's better to live your most authentic self because it's more natural. It's more you, like you don't have to put Mm -hmm. as much effort into it and it's just nicer. And I feel like that brings us into our question with the queer segment. I have a really good question that we could uh, help answer with our unqualified advice. So this is the podcast part where we answer questions that we really have no business trying to answer, but we do our best from our experiences. All right, so this question comes from my Instagram DMs. Anonymous says, how do you know if you're gay if you've never had feelings for a girl, in parentheses, but never had feelings for a guy either, and are only attracted to girls and can only see yourself being with a girl asking for a friend? I feel like you almost kind of answered your own question there because you're kind of saying, I can only see myself with a girl. It's kind of... I don't know, I guess you don't have that um, ingrained heterosexuality where it's like you need to be with a man or a woman in order to procreate. So if you haven't been with either, but you are thinking that you could be with a girl, I mean, I feel like, yeah, of course you. Is this a, is this a boy or a girl, do we know? It looks like they represent as female. I okay. Don't. Yeah, that, that makes sense then. If you can see yourself as being somebody with the same sex, then... I mean, most that isn't a normal, not normal, but it's not a common thought amongst most people. People that are straight, they mainly are thinking, okay, like I'm going to marry somebody of the opposite sex so I can have a family and all this stuff. But if you kind of see yourself with the same sex partner, then I feel like that's kind of your answer that you know that you're gay. I think it's one of those things. And like, I've felt that too. I remember the first feeling that I ever had about a girl and it was a movie star. It was in a movie. It was Pirates of the Caribbean. It Mm -hmm. was Elizabeth Swan in one scene. And I never had like an actual in real life person for another couple years, like at the end of high school. So Mm -hmm. for me, it didn't really feel real. And so I didn't consider it to be a real thing because it wasn't a real person. It was a fictitious character. So I understand like where, you know, Anonymous is is coming from with that because of all the compulsory heterosexuality and things like that. It's really easy to downplay your feelings and be like, oh, that's not it. Or, oh, that can't be it. Or like, you know, X, Y, and Z reasons of why it's not. And I didn't, I didn't have a crush until a little bit. And it was one of those things where I was like, oh, well, that's just like a, like, I just really like her. I just really like her, you know, I think, style. She's I, I, think you're, I admire her. Mm-hmm. And, and it was a slow realization once I started having an actual crush. And even like when I had an actual crush, I was like, oh, it's just physical. I don't, I don't actually, you know, like her and things. When my parents would always ask us like, oh, like when you grow up, like what, you know, how many kids do you want to have? Do you want to have kids? Like, what does your life look like? They would always ask us that. And as it changes and evolves as you get older and mature. And I remember wanting to have like a house and have kids and have that, you know, stable kind of thing, you know, like my parents had, but I never saw myself with a man. Like when I thought about having a job and him having a job and him coming home or me making dinner and staying home, it just felt so out of place. Like I wanted to be the one that 
wore a suit and came home, you know, and made dinner or wearing a suit while making dinner. Like, cause those job roles don't, you know, those, you know, partner roles don't matter. And it just didn't sit well with me. Like it was like, I want it, but in a different way. And it didn't click until I obviously came out that I was like, oh, that's why I could never see myself when other people were making, you know, on Pinterest, they were making like all their wedding stuff in high school. You know, I went to a rural school too. So I had a lot of people that were thinking about getting married and had, you know, those long-term relationships in high school. And I was like, gee, oh, fuck, I don't want to do that. I want to travel. Like I want to do this. I could never see myself like realistically getting married until now because I actually am my true self. So, and also it really depends. Like I would recommend going and trying both like go out and if you want to hook up with a guy, hook up with a girl, make out with a guy, make out with a girl. But if that doesn't fancy you or you're not interested in that, another possibility is it could be asexual, but wanting it to be with a same sex partner. Good point. Another thing I realized was that in high school, like people actually had crushes on boys. Like they, it's not something that they could control. It was just, it was a feeling that they had crushes on them. And when I was in high school, I didn't have that. I had, I would say two guys out of all the guys that I dated or had sex with that I actually liked. Like I liked all, all of physical, you know, mental, emotional, and it was really hard. It was like really hard to do. And I thought, that man, that just might, I'm just might be picky. That just might be what I am. Hell, I might even be demisexual. And I remember like just having crushes on guys because everyone else did. So I was like, oh, I'm going to pick that guy. Mm-hmm. That guy. That's the same fun. way. I thought it was like whoever was the most popular. I was like, ah, oh, you're the quarterback. I like you. That was really yeah. the only thing that I liked. And I think that's a, a signal too. If you're intentionally, like you're being like, that is the person that I am choosing to have a crush on. It's like, you don't choose it. And, but nobody tells you that. You just think that everyone chooses it, which is no, that funny. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. There was a girl in the third grade that told me she was bisexual. And I was like, ooh, what does bisexual mean? And she says, it means I like both girls and guys. And I was like, oh. Right. And I just, I developed an intense crush on her. And that was when I really started questioning. And I still remember her name to this day. Her name was Brianna. No, I, I feel the same way. I had a, an experience with my sister's friend had two moms. Mm-hmm. And I remember that was my first time ever knowing a family with two moms. And they were pretty active in the community. I ended up playing soccer with her. She's super cool. And I remember like the first time that my sister and I went over to their house to play. And it was funny because I, I didn't really think much of it. Like I was like, oh yeah, like that's, you know, we'll call her Hannah and Emily. That's Hannah mm-hmm. and Emily. Like that's, that's their moms. And I remember being like kind of curious. No one else seemed to really, like they were just like, oh, okay. And I kind of sat there for a little bit and I thought about it, like the roles, you know, like who's the mom and who's the dad and Oh, oh, like one of the moms is more masculine, one's more feminine. Oh, so she probably had had her. No, wait, the masculine one had had her. Like that's, you know, and I like was really like processing it. Like, I guess I was obsessed because I was gay. I mean, I wasn't like obsessed, but I was like very aware. I was like so aware more than anyone else, like they're together and and they're over here and I would like observe them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's just because they were different. So I was like, ooh, something that's different. Let me see. Or, or it's because I was gay or both. True. But also, I feel like everybody does it. Like, they always look at a lesbian couple and they're like, okay, well, who's the top and who's the bottom? And I mm-hmm. hate that. That's not a thing. No, I know. You're sensitive about <laughs> it. <laughs> Damn it. No, but I get that. We've talked about this on this podcast about tops and bottoms, and it's just preferences in the bedroom. That's all it is. That's all it, it is. It can change, and it can evolve as exactly. you experience more people and yourself and figure it out. Exactly. Like, I was on with um, Shay before this, and, you know, I was talking about how I thought that maybe I'm not a switch. Maybe I'm actually a soft top, because I was like, I, I feel like I might be. Like, I think that that – I think that accurately reflects me. And then I had an experience after and I was like, oh, no, I'm, I think I'm definitely a switch. I, I definitely think that that is, that is where I lie. I feel like it can be more qual. Like, I don't know, because there, <laughs> there are some moments where I can very much so be a hard, hard top and I'm just 
going at it. And there are some times where it's like, mm, I just kind of want to feel like a pillow princess and just sit here. And then there are some times where it's like, I just kind of want to be a baby bottom. And so it just really depends on my mood and not, it's like sex is, is like different every single time you do it. And so it really just depends on my mood really. I think that's the best thing about switches or just being open to any and all experiences, you know, Mm -hmm. like going with the flow. That's cool. But yeah, it it was interesting how that changes so quick in a matter of, you know, like a month or so. I I thought maybe I'm this. And I was like, no, I'm actually, I think I'm, I think I'm right back to where I thought I was. So anonymous, if you're listening, take it easy on yourself. You don't have to label yourself. It's all a process of figuring it out. But anything that any conclusion that you come to is valid, whether or not you want to identify in the community or not is completely up to you. But I would say, listen to your heart, stay true to yourself, you know, try to not let as much of the outside world get into your inside world of how you think about yourself and what your feelings are towards people. Exactly. Also, guys, if you would like to submit a question that could be chosen for this podcast, please send them to questions at queertalkpodcast.com to be featured. Uh, The email is also in the description below. So, Katie, you want to answer some questions really fast? Of course. Sweet. Snow White or Mulan? (sighs) Snow White. Invisibility or super strength? Invisibility. Big spoon or little spoon? Little spoon. Favorite crystal? Citrine. (laughs) Texting or talking on the phone? FaceTiming. Ah, there we go. Favorite queer movie? I really like The L Word. Oh, okay. The reboot? or I like the original. Okay, I feel that. Flannels or Hawaiian shirts? Flannels. Have you ever worn socks with sandals? Yes. <laughs> Last song you listen to on repeat? Crystal by Stevie Nicks. Such a good one. I love Man. Stevie Nicks. Witch bitch energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Giving presents or getting presents? Giving. I hate getting presents. It makes me feel awkward. (laughs) Is it because, like, you feel like you have to be excited when you don't like it? Yeah, and I also, I I just, I don't like the fact that people spend money on me. I just go like, oh, thank you. I'm like, but I was supposed to get you something. I know. (laughs) It makes me uncomfortable, but I'm getting better at it. And last question, first celebrity you ever had a crush on? Nicole Kidman in the Moulin Rouge. Ooh, I love Nicole Kidman. That, that accent. I don't know if she has it in Moulin Rouge, but I love, God, I love an Australian accent. She's just a snack. Like, wow. <laughs> All right. Well, Katie, thank you so much for being on this podcast. If you want to check out more about Katie, you can find her at uh, Katie Kai. That's K-A-D-I-E-K-A-I-I. And as always, you can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan you enjoyed this episode, please drop us a rating on Apple Podcasts and leave us a little written review. Helps us get discovered by more queer people just like you. That's it for this episode, my queers. Thank you for listening and subscribing. If you're not subscribed on Apple Podcasts, hit that subscribe button. Give us a follow on Spotify. Uh, Be you, be queer, stay safe, and we will see you on the next episode.